What is going on YouTube? So coming back today with my Orlando Magic preview for 2016-2017. So the Magic are coming off a 35-47 and 47 season uh, where they gradually have been improving their record three years in a row. So this is a team that had somewhat of a busy offseason, uh, dishing out arguably their best player in Victor Oladipo, bringing in Serge Ibaka. One of the bigger moves of the offseason for sure. But um, let's go ahead and jump right into it. First of my two X factors is sorting out the front court. This is a team with just a stupid amount of depth on the front court compared to their back court. After drafting Steven Zimmerman, they now have, I'd say, five or six players that could all start at either the four or the five spot. And after signing Bismack Biombo as well. So. <clears throat> While the Victor Oladipo trade didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me, I mean, if nothing else, they got a whole lot of depth up there. So, second key fact, or second X factor, excuse me, is keep improving. Like, I really do think they overall took a step back this offseason. Just, like I said, they kind of look like the Pistons from a couple years ago. If they do end up starting Aaron Gordon at the three, like I think they're going to, then that's very similar to what the Pistons had with Josh Smith, Greg Monroe, and Andre Drummond all in the front court. Just, I mean, yeah, that's a lot of talent up there, but that's just kind of a shit show, uh, like, time-wise and just roster-wise. But anyway, if they can keep improving, maybe add five wins there, um, that would not only put them in playoff contention, but that would really have them on the doorstep of uh, contending in the East uh, for the next couple years. So... Key players. First one is Aaron Gordon. This guy, I wouldn't doubt, will be the best player for the Magic for the next five years. I think he's a stud. I mean, he's very athletic. He's been, I think he's overall been improving every year. He's been in the NBA so far, what, two years now? Um, so, yeah, improved last year. Let's see if I can pull up the per game stats. So, rookie year after averaging 5.17 points per game, damn near doubled that with 9.22 points per game. And then also almost doubled his rebounds from three point, or around 3.5 to 6.5 uh, last year. Also, didn't really double his minutes, ended up starting 37 games, played in 78 total. Again, I think this is his re really his big year to break out, either this year or next year. I think it's just, I think it's just a matter of time before he, comes a or before he becomes a star in this league. My second key player is Alfred Payton. Now, I think this guy plays a major role in the Orlando Magic success this season. Not necessarily because I think he's going to be a superstar or he's going to suck, but kind of because he's borderline in between. Again, first round pick in 2014. I, I thought he was a little bit overdrafted at the time, but again, uh, a little too early to tell. Had an okay season last year, averaging close to 11 points per game, uh, about six and a half assists. You know, he's, I don't know. I, Alfred Payton, I just feel like he's going to end up becoming a very mediocre guard in the NBA. Um, if he can make a big push this year, the bat, I mean, the Magic's backcourt needed at this point. Uh, like I said, Oladipo was the main focus of that backcourt, and he was the future of that team. And now he's gone, and now you got Evan Fournier as the starting two guard. So, like I said, a lot on Alfred Payton's shoulders this year. And third is Serge Ibaka. Now, you give up a lot for a guy that will most likely be a one-year rental. Uh, he will most likely be going into free agents next year. I think he's going to try to find a big market team that has a chance to contend, that needs a power forward. Um, a guy that can kind of stretch the floor and has the defensive capability of him. But, again, you add, it, it, there is a lot of talent on their front court, no doubt. But I think everyone's going to have to contribute their piece. Everyone's going to have to contribute their own value. Serge Ibaka, definitely a different player than a lot of the guys in the front court. Um, you know, I don't think anyone else in that front court has Ibaka's skill set. So that could be one way that he can really separate himself from the rest of this team. So, worst case scenario for me, and it's the Magic, they, I think they regress a little bit this off season, so I say worst case scenario is definitely bottom five finish in the NBA, maybe even bottom three. Best case scenario is probably like a seventh or eighth seed and then uh, be able to make it into the playoffs this year. It's just hard to see a team like this like really finishing above seven, maybe six at the absolute highest. My overall record prediction for the Magic, though, is 30 and 52. 
I do think right now they are the third worst team in the East, maybe fourth. It's like I said, it, I really, really, it, it's hard to describe how much I did not like that El Depot trade for the side of the Magic and the fact that you know they used their first round pick on Steven Zimmerman when did they need him? Definitely not. And they signed Bismarck Biombo to what I believe was a four year, seventy two million dollar deal, which you know he's proved that he can contribute a decent amount of value to a team. Uh, with the Raptors last year having a big playoffs, but overall, I don't think he was worth it, especially in that situation. The Magic just weren't the team that needed him. So anyway, that'll pretty much do it for this preview. I will be moving into the West now. Uh, next up is the San Antonio Spurs, so keep a lookout for that. But anyway, that's pretty much it. See ya.